Welcome back to Super Sentai Review, episode number 136. Yep, it's back. It's only been almost three weeks. I, I, I checked it. Three weeks is the last time I did this one. Well, because I've been reviewing Killing Science for 300 years and maxed out, and the Execution Real Life. I just finished it yesterday. So, my plan was to simply do this. So, this is my make goes straight back to Shirk Andrew. And that did happen. But not immediately. I had to wait. I want to wait to the very next day just so I can remember this stuff quicker. Now, this one I'm discussing two movies plus two episodes of Shurikenger. Yes. Now, the way the order I'm going to talk about these particular ones, well, I'll talk about the, the first movie first, Fate of War, which was actually the footage this movie was used for Clash of the Red Rangers, the movie, which I'll get to more of that soon. I'll talk about the two episodes, 27 28, and the Shurikenger vs. Go Wonder movie. Silver, uh, Silver String Bang, that's what it's called. The Faithful War, this actually is a original movie for the show. It's only, get this, it's shorter than the average episode, which the average episode is like 23 minutes. This was exactly 20 minutes. It's really short. Yeah, so we have this, yeah, this overweight general. Now, basically, now, if you watch this movie, after you watch the Class for Rangers movie, like, wait, this footage looks very familiar. Because they use footage in this very movie for that particular movie. Yeah, so the plot is simply to try to stop this particular cursed one. So they go find a founder's disc, which was lost. Well, actually, it was kept in a temple that, get this, it's held by cursed ones, which is strange, to say the least. Yes, his name is held by them, so they would sneak in. They find it, no problem. Apparently, the priest may have been killed or whatever. So... They find it, and of the course, they activate it. They find it was a dinosaur disc. Yes, a dinosaur disc. And then we activate against the general, who previously was sealed by a shurikenger. Do not know who. They don't say who it was. So when they transform the sword, it transforms into a shark sword. Yep, and he uses it to stop it. And of course, and he goes giant size. Then eventually, he's beaten. Yep. Uh, I do love the story for this thing. And the, the plot is... It's quite interesting what it is, and it's good play. It's a good quick movie to get through if you're just watching the series. You, it, it's like basically if you watch this, this movie, it felt like basically that you could easily fit this into the show. Yes, and you're probably asking, Nick, where in the world does this movie take place? Well. The answer is, it takes place between episodes 24 and 25. So this is well before the duel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, first time that the Rangers see Nakasuma. So, Yeah, that's when the movie takes place, which is a very interesting place to take put it in. Mm hmm So Yeah. So as for the episodes of the show, that's up before I get to the movie, which movie is quite interesting. I love it. The uh, Shurikenja vs. Go On movie. So, the two episodes. We have a monster who ability to swap items. Basically, the events of this episode does play into the very next episode with the view of a new item. I'll get to that. So, <laughs> so basically, like, this guy's apparently working for Somebody, yeah. The, the monster this episode actually works for somebody who does make a debut at the end of this very episode. Who, you might ask? Well. He's referred to as a Camaro Sendra, or otherwise also the, the, the eluded. That's what he referred to himself as. And this episode was his debut. Well, he debuted at the end of the episode. Then, of course, he actually, well, fought the Rangers the very next episode. 
And he's there for 17 straight episodes. He even appears in the Share Carrying Different Scar in the movie. He's there in episode 43. His He does have a sense of kind, he does have a kind of part. Serator. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and here's something interesting though. His um his sent the counterpart his Power Rangers counterpart, well Serenator and Um A- 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 Akamaru. Yes, here's something quite interesting about both of them. They have the same number of episodes they appear in. And you're thinking, really? Yes, really. Which that is interesting. Who would have thunk these two appear in the same amount of episodes? Seventeen. One, two, three. Five, six. So that's here is seven. Maybe they include. Yeah. Actually, it's more like seven episodes. So it's a bit less. Yeah. So the monster is called. If I can get my mouse working here. Yeah, the monster this one is called Akarug. Yeah, this is his sole appearance. And you might be asking, does he appear in Power Rangers? Yes, he does. Yep, he's on a Switch Beast. Which, yeah, he basically serves the same function as he does in Power Rangers. Yeah. By the way, they never really changed him at all. In, in Power Rangers, same ability, same plot, yeah, swapping powers, yep. And this whole thing is like, oh, let's have people swap with objects, like have Shinka Red with a cat statue. We have Shinka Blue, who swap places with a a statue that holds his groin. Going number one. We have Shinka Pink turn into a fan. Yeah, seriously. You have, you have a like, girl turn into a, a can. Another girl turn into a sign. A guy turns into a pole. Like, swap. Yeah. So, it just basically up to Shurika Green and Shurika Yellow to basically beat him. Yeah. Use his own game against him. Swap by. So, the way to, un- to undo all... All the swapping stuff is to have him swap with Sherrick and Green and use his own sort of slice his own body. And eventually thanks to using the super the, the basically the soup the the super card thing basically for the power engine super samurai mode. And they beat him. Yes, it is very similar to how it is Power Rangers. Very little change here aside in fact the Kabuto the Kabuto is not in here. So and then basically because Genta was turned into a sushi. It does play a role in this episode. Yes. This is a question I do like about this. That 27 is the start of some new stuff here. Yes. Where we're planting seeds for the end of Shurikenger. Well, planting seeds here and there. Though one seed is carrying for the next episode. A- Akadoro, he basically is here for a good chunk of this remaining episodes. He does not appear for the last five. Nope, because he's taken care of by 43. I will get to that when I get to it. So, like, the very next episode, he introduced himself. And he basically goes, oh yeah, that's who you So you're the certain individual that the other guy was talking about. He's like, yep, that's me. So basically, he blocks an attack by Dr. Ruja for his loyalty. That's the kind of vessel of his, and we briefly see Dayu appear in this episode. Yes, Dayu, who was away from Daku. Yep, who was basically Xandra's anti counterpart. So, Genta has got fear of sushi, because last episode was turning with sushi. So, we all see him basically putting Samurai on a lantern of his, which this lantern has popped up as Carson's. I think like since his debut, so he basically is using on it, and he's also very hesitant to basically use his own morpher because he's afraid of sushi. So he doesn't wear the sushi outfit, and of course he's scared the whole time. So <laughs> they try various ways to everybody's like darkest fears. 
Yeah, in the case of Shrek of Blue, he's made of cactuses. For, like, yellow and pink, it's the cooking stuff. Okay. Green didn't necessarily say what his was. I don't remember what it was. Red is quite strange. Apparently, he's afraid of haunted houses. Yes, seriously. So, by the way, how do they solve the whole thing with Genthus Vera Sushi? In case you're curious, though, did they use the same thing in Samurai? Yes, they did. How? Sub was piece of sushi in his mouth. Forcefully. Yeah, though in Lee Sentai, in the, in the Sentai, they actually clued the couple of the warriors holding him down. And they almost crack his jaw in order to basically put this in there. And we reveal that, oh yeah, he's got a brand new weapon. Dakaru, a, a talking lantern. Which does not talk in Inspiring the Samurai. Nope, does not talk. Do not know why it doesn't talk. Apparently its ability, it can fly around, shoot a hidden disc. Grow itself giant size and form itself its own Zord. And it would be the monster of the episode. But I gotta admit, it's a pretty good episode, this one was. Though, the, the, you have to, oh yeah, based upon old stuff for Samurai. And then Tinker Blue's like, they had nothing to do with Samurai. Basically, it plays the formats. Yep. But yeah, two really good episodes that one is. But as for the movie, oh yes, this is quite interesting. So, we start off with Go Onger, with a battling. Go to Power Rangers. This is Professor Cog. Yes. One of his two appearances here made in Power Rangers. Yeah, this guy appeared twice. And if you're curious though, did he appear twice in Sentai? Yes, he did. Mm-hmm. Yep. Which I do find this so interesting. The fact that, well... That he appears here. I think this was his debut. Let's see. Yeah, this is his debut. So apparently he was the leader of the Garnick, the machines. Yeah, it's interesting to know he's the one who basically is the leader of the gang, even though he never appeared in the show. Nope. Yeah, and he did appear. This one's Bachid. Ba Bachid. I think the only thing he changed was a slight lettering of his name. Where was his doppelganger? And he appears for two episodes. Apesta Cog, meanwhile, appears for two. Yes, two. Yeah. It's weird, though, they brought this guy back for Go Kaiju for the tribute. Yep. Oh, and by the way, his pollution ministers do briefly appear in this movie. And they want nothing to do with him. They just rather do no, they rather spend time at the bottom of the Sinji River. Yes, three pollution ministers, one of whom is a human appearance. So, what happens where the Go Wander is fighting him in a duel, and then of course all of them get separate. Well, he basically fire like think he's been nope, not really. And then he proceeds to scatter the seven members of Go Wander. Go Wander was a team that had seven members. Well. All scattered various worlds. We're we'll, 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 we'll movie where they went. Excuse me. Shinka Red sent out the engines to go find them. Yep. By the way, one thing I did notice though about the movie, we did have the Go on appear all without their helmets on. Which I'm like, really? Why would they appear outside their helmets without their helmets on when they're in the Megazord? Yeah, I thought this was kind of weird. 
So we have then we have well go on red. He basically appears and unlike in Clash for Every Disney movie, he actually does demorph. Because in Clash of Red Rangers, he doesn't. He spends the whole time morphed. Wouldn't that be a waste of power doing that? Oh, they write off, and, and basically it's written in the show that the reason why he can't, because apparently the war zone is full of pollution. Which, that's kind of bullcrap given the ending of RPM. So, and basically that was the on-screen reason. The behind-the-scenes reason, because the actor who played... RPM Red, join the Actors Union. That is the only reason why that happened. Thank you, Neo Saban, for basically ruining a really good crossover. And plus also, this movie actually had the whole go on to team peer. Unlike in the Cloud of Rangers, just RPM Red, nobody else. Though, the silver one, she did a return for Dimensions of Danger. Yep. Yep, so they meet up, and of course, they introduce each other. And of course, Taka does not like him very much because he referred to him as a reckless. He refers to him as an amateur. And of course, they take offense to that. And they argue a lot the whole movie. Now, the thing is, in the in the Power Rangers equivalent, there is a reason why they're doing this because they've been brainwashed to do this. Like, they put under a spell, and then of course, G just undoes it. Here, it's. No reason. There, there's no explained reason for this at all. So, like, Bashid is like, oh, I'm going to basically use the, the, the Senju waters, to, to, because it's pollution anyways, to pollute the world. And apparently the butcher is like, yeah, I have no problem with this. Just use the river. Despite the fact that's a source of their freaking power. Yes. So, yeah, drain it all away. Yes, the river they spent so much time trying to raise thanks to human suffering. Yeah, throw it away to a guy you just freaking met. Plus, I love it when he shows up on the ship. You can hear the clanking, because he's machine anyways. You can just hear the clanking of his feet on the wooden ship, which I thought was a really cool effect that was. So, they summon one of the monsters who just appears in the movie. I don't think he appears in that one. I don't think he does. Oh yeah, and this actually is the first one they bring back the old... I think it was like... Uh, yeah, they bring back uh, the grunts of Go On, which is interesting to say. I like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also, the Monsters movie, he does appear in Clash of Rangers movie. Except for a Sergeant Tread. Uh, his name is Homer Green. Yeah. So, and then of course they have them fire the the dock, which not the first time Sentai loves doing the whole dock thing. And then of course the other Rangers get scattered to various worlds. In Power Rangers, they went to the world of RPM, went to one world. This one they went to multiple. They do reveal exactly where they went. Genta, and I think this is supposed to be Shurik and Pink. I believe they go to the Christmas world where they run into, I believe it's supposed to be Go On Yellow. And I think, uh, I think it was um, Go On Blue, I think it was. Mm -hmm. And in the case of, of Shuriken, uh, I think it was, it wasn't Blue. I think it was, um, it was Yellow and it was, um, it was Pink. And green, yeah, pink and green. They end up going to the same world, go to the samurai world with go with go on uh, black and green. Oh, and by the way, Shuriken Pink, uh, not Pink, uh, Blue ends up in Junk World where he runs into the 
well, the Go Wings duo. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so they go like it's a Christmas world, a grass world, which nobody's there. There is also Junk World, which is where Shurik and Blue went. And of course, thanks to the engines, they get back home, no problem. So they kidnap G, and they kidnap the little robot who's from Go Wanger. Interesting, they bring him in. They get taken, and they're basically worried about the kidnapping. Where, of course, they they go, and they go, and they just walk there. In Clash Red Rangers, get this. Sure, basically the Red Samurai Ranger summons a horse and gives a car. Yes, a car to, to RPM Red. Here he does a little bit later. There's no horses movie, surprisingly. So they just walk there unmorphed. Unlike in Power Rangers, where the Red Rangers morphed the whole time, or the the Red RPM Ranger, and they finally meet up with him. And of course, then the, of course you have Shuriken Red who wants to go rescue them. He goes in, and of course he's well takes out a couple of them. And of course the the guy's like, "What are you what are you doing? I, I'm going to kill your hostages." And of course you have them fighting each other. And while they're distracted, the Lion Origami Shuriken Red's Origami frees both of them. And then of course. The pollution press is like, what are you going to do with just two of you and hundreds of us? And you're like, who said we had two? And then all the rangers show up. Like, the rest of the go Ranger rangers and the shark rangers. And then they have, this is a really cool thing, the whole thing with the banner where they just swipe in. And of course they even have some that basically have the go Ranger logo on the flag as a symbol of the, the team up with the two of them. And you have the Shuriken Rangers go in their Komodos, and you have they even they even basically um, change clothes for the Go On to put them in their racing suits, which I thought was so cool. And then they had their morph sequence, and then they had the massive fight sequence. Like my gosh, great timing! This is an absolute fantastic fight sequence. Like they even throw in the the opening song for Shuriken Ranger, which is a really good song. And later on, they threw in the song for Go On. It's been a while since I've heard it. They have to limit all the grunts. Then, of course, all that's left is just space. And then you have the two Red Rangers just dealing with the the one cursed one. So, and of course, you also have it where the the grunts would go on to form more like a separate one, which I thought was so hilarious. So, how to take him out? Simple. Have Shuriken Red use his script his his uh, scriptology to form a red sports car. Yeah, and and of course, go on. It's like I'm driving, <laughs> and of course he gets in, and he does not buckle his seatbelt surprisingly, but he just drives really good, and he just drives while basically Shuriken slices and di basically eliminates all of the the grunts, even the one basically couldn't turn. It's like yeah, that was it, and of course eliminated the the one who bit the the the, the curse one who was there. And then, of course, they, they use a combined attack. Basically, a, a basically two-way attack to basically beat him. And plus, I love the morph sequence. They basically have the whole line up. And they all morph. Of course, they do this also again in the final move, which I'll get to after I finish the Shurik Ranger. And, of course, thanks to going giant size, they basically summon their Zords. Yep. And if you haven't seen Go Wander, if you just see RPM, you would love the sequence. It's really good. And of course, the friends of the like, hey, I'll go giant size too. It's like, what? He's going giant size too? You can do it either will. And they bow for a while. And then they leave. Well, they, they try to stop and then they leave. And of course, thanks to a hint from early on, Gansa figures out where they went. The moon. Yes, the moon. And you're probably thinking, like, what was the last time Santa ever went to the moon? Uh, to my knowledge, I think the last time I could think of, I saw, was probably an O-Ranger. Actually, no, it wasn't O-Ranger. It was Mega Ranger. That was the last one I did. So, they fly to the moon, and of course, the guy sacrifices his own com comrade. And then they use a combine of all the Zords to basically pee after he's hides on his own, like, re re remake of, the, of this plant on the moon. And eventually, he's destroyed. But no time to celebrate because they have to go on, they have to go home to protect the other worlds, and thing goes off, and that's how it ends there. Damn good movie, love it. I do recommend it if you're a fan, like if you like RPM, if if you're a fan of Samurai, Power Ranger Samurai, you would like the equivalent of this one. Just 
But in my opinion, between the two movies, between Clash of Rangers and this movie, this movie is a heck of a lot better. Why? Because they include the rest of the of the RPMs sent to counterpart, the Gohan Rangers. All of them. Not just the Red Ranger, all the entire freaking team. An excellent team up. Plus, they even go over the old uh, uh, plant they use uh, several times and then sent for the 80s stuff. But yeah, damn good. Love all the fight scenes here. Reminds me a lot of the the the, t- the two part team up reinforcements from the future, which I love that team up. It's so awesome from Wild Force. Reminds me of that. This was this what reminds me of. Just so awesome. Yep. So yeah, that's it. Sick love you. Uh, next up is the comic corner. Then I'm gonna do two. I'm gonna watch two episodes of Shark Avenger, and then it's on to Overlord. Yes, because Overlord came out today. Okay, next video. Bye.